Now, uh, we see this with any of these kids who are putting palatal lifts in, is the muscle tone condition of the muscles of the tongue and the palate muscles come down. You see these little pillars in the back of your mouth, we call these the tonsillar fascia, and just as basically the pillars before the port, okay? Those, all those muscles tie into the tongue, tie up into the palate. They may just be weak. They may need some exercising. We need some stimulation. We use oral stem. I'm a real big believer in the foam oral cleansing thing. I love to put those in water, freeze them. Nice little oral stem sorts of things. And we do a bunch of things there. I have colleagues that will tell you, oh, if a kid gags, he's got great tone in his palate. That's a total pucky. In the Midwest, that means like bull pucky. You understand? Know <laughs> right? That is not a, an evaluation of velopharyngeal strength. A good velopharyngeal strength evaluation means an endoscopy through the nose. We will either do a visual on the type of closure, and we also want to do some pressure monitoring. We'll talk about that when we get to swap. Okay? And we also have some functional efforts. Again, some of my same resolutions, okay? Just bringing all this up so that you understand that we've got some issues here. Lack of volume and projection tied in. We've really kind of already talked about that already. But again, some of these can be functional. Some of these can be motoric in nature, okay? Now, a lot of our kids may be using voice to compensate for the poor tick. Do this for me. Everybody say pop 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 as fast as you can. Ready? Go. Pop, 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 pop. Okay? Now say T T T T T. <laughs> See, you thought you were gonna get up and do an underwear exercise and straight out. Now and now go ka 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 ka. Alright now, here's the baby. Go. Patika patika patika. Okay. This is what we call a didogokinesis evaluation. And what we're talking about is how many how many times can you make these rapid movements? And as you did, pa is frontal, t is quasi-mid, ka is back, okay? We want to know how fast that articulator can move. If you have an enlarged tongue, most of our kids have that, or uh, macroglossia. If they have a weak tongue, this slows down that whole area. So they may decide to use their voice. If they can't make tuh as well, they may decide to throw a little more voice in there for that pop off of the T rather than the explosion they're going to we get out of the air with a good tongue seal. And they may not be able to make the tongue seal, OK? We have talked about this. No one has said this. So aren't you happy you had a speech pathologist here today, huh? How many of you had your kids hearing tested? OK. All of you should be raising your hands. <laughs> what? Huh? Oh. Right. These kids probably, with most of our maxillofacial kids, have a higher incidence of ear infections that go on with upper respiratory. Until these kids get through puberty, the angle of these station tubes is such that they retain a lot of fluid. All kids are this way. Our maxillofacial kids are even worse. So we see a high amount of ear infections in kids. Ear infections beget us some conductive hearing losses because the middle ear fills with a little fluid. Just routinely have that done. Should be able to get that done through your school just simply by asking to have it done. If they flunk the hearing test at school, don't think, oh my god, I got a deaf kid. Just go off to the ENT and have them look at the ears, okay? All right, let's take a look at this. It happens to be a Costello kid. It's, it's, it's clear. We, we talked about this. I, you know, this is no secrets in here. What I want you to focus on, let me explain what's going on here. These are hooks that we screwed into the side of the ECMO. These are her glasses, okay? So ignore this. What I want you to look at, here's her soft palate. Here's her epiglottis. Now, I, go, I teach at a Jesuit university. We can't talk religion. We can't talk abortion. We can't do any of that stuff. Okay? So I say this, and all my kids go, <gasps> okay? We have a design flaw. When God made us, we have a problem. Our airway is in front of our food tube, all right? All right, everybody do this. Put your finger on your Adam's apple and go, ee, ooh. Ee, ooh. All right, what'd you see? Goes up and down, doesn't it? Okay. 
So you're going to see rise and fall of the larynx. You're going to see port moving here, and you're going to see the tongue going here. And we're going to run this little girl through a whole variety of port exercises, and we're testing here for velopharyngeal competency. We're listening for our tick. So we're doing a whole variety of things at once. This is a standard velo uh, uh, or a, a semi-fluorographic, we were doing this in front of an x-ray machine, a little bit of a costly way of doing this. And I'm just telling you, we did this after a swallowing exam. We don't just run kids in and do this for our tech purposes. We did this after a swallowing exam, but since we had her in there, we'd already paid for the time and the, and the equipment, we did this. Okay, here we go. Oh, that was real smart, didn't it? I can't do this with this thing. Here's her soft palate. Hold still. Say, Peter has a puppy. Peter has a puppy. Okay, hold your hand still. Say, tell Ted to try. Good. Say, okay, say, Katie likes cookies. Say, I see stars. I zip zippers. Say, I like cookies. I see Sesame Street. I wash dishes. Okay, say this for me. Say scissors, scissors, scissors. Good, say You see a lot of stuff going on there. What would you say about the voice? Let's make you obvious voice pathologist for a moment. What would you say about the voice? Soft. 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 All right, these are all words we use. Hoarse, raspy, okay. What would you say about, did you hear nasality? You need to let it listen better. Here's a little nasality there, okay? But that's okay, that's okay. That's a real problem. That's all right. <laughs> My grad students can say that I beat them over the head. All right. So there's a lot of activity going on there, okay? She was on the edge at that point of us considering putting a soft palate uh, uh, spoon in there or, or what we call palatal lift. So those are some of the things we do for our tick. So as a parent, what should you have asked out of that? Well, the whole issues that we went through. Is there good closure for her to have an adequate amount of is the sound coming out the mouth. My bigger concern here is not the soft palate reporting on this child. At that stage of the game, it was her voice. Okay. Now, we're going to make some quantum leaves because I know I'm getting short of time. Swallowing, huge issue. This has been like a moving lab every day out here for lunch for me. I've been watching all your kids eat. Okay. I'm not even going to show a hands because I know it's 100%. Swallowing is a huge issue. Now, when you looked at the voice on that kid just a moment ago, you saw what going on. You saw the tongue going up and down. You saw the larynx going up and down. All right, let's do our little larynx thing again. This time, put your finger on your hand apple. Now I want you to sense what you're going to do with your tongue. And I want to sense what you're doing with your breathing. Okay? Now swallow that spit in your mouth. Okay? You did about six things in a second. You raised the larynx down low. There's this little door that flops over. Here's the design claw that flops over the airway. Your tongue pushed down, your larynx raised to squeeze that door in place. Soft palate has to go up. You have to get enough pressure to help push the bolus down. Now, I'm gonna go through here real quick. The issues that we have with our Costello kids are follows. Weak suck reflex. We talked about that already. The, the occupational therapist has talked about it. Dr. Walner talked about it. And we have special feeding things. Some of the things that are out there for our palate kids are very good for feeding for the infants. We have slow eating time. I know, it's a battle. Okay? And, and I've, I've said this to parents, and I'm not anti-religious here, folks. I think that putting an NG tube in, or a G tube in, or a J tube in is not a bad thing. Because some of these kids need 
the nutrition to mature to get to the point where they can develop the strength to do the swallow. If you can't get the nutrition in, they can't develop the strength, and you're screwed. Okay? Um, I used to be a big reader of the classics, but it's like Donnie's Circle of Hell. The more you do it, the worse it gets, the worse it gets, the more you do it, and down the toilet you go. By putting an NG tube in, you can take some time out. You can swallow for training while you're taking nutrition down the tube. As you get stronger, you can then feed by mouth with the tube in place. You're not going to hurt a thing. Okay? And we've got some of our colleagues that feel like, well, we can't put anything in the mouth unless we get that NG tube in. <coughs> Again, bullpucky, okay? <laughs> oh, bullpucky, it's a great training device. Okay. Uh, let's go on. Uh, type of mastication or chewing. Get in the swallows here, you're going to see this little girl. Chewing is not <coughs> chewing is down. Grind, tongue goes in, sweeps the food out, reorganizes it, puts it back in. We've got some problems here. Poor staging of the swallow. When you guys did your little swallow thing, some of our kids don't get the larynx up before the bolus comes over. They shoot the bolus over, then they bring the tongue uh, back, and then they raise the larynx, and by the time they do that, it's too late and it goes into their lungs. Strength of swallow. If you don't have a good velo pharyngeal closure, you don't get good pressure in the mouth, you can't push the bolus in. So we have some strength issues. Palatal vault, this is my fancy word for, some of our kids have palates that look like chapel ceilings. They're very high. And I'm not gonna go through my club palate lecture, but this deals with how the palatal plates during about the 12th week. Rise in utero, the mandible has to come out, the tongue has to drop down, the palate plates come together. And sometimes that staging gets a little slowed or changed. I don't know enough about that right now in these kids. So I need some more data there. Okay, let's take a look at some of this. Before you understand that, I'm gonna run you through a quick swallow. <clears throat> I have a handout here if you want. I got one for family if you want it. The normal swallow has four stages. We have a pre-oral stage where we do something to receive the food or the liquid. And so if it's solid food, you're gonna do different with it than the liquid. You're gonna be, you're gonna sensor, sensitize that, oh, this is something that has to be broken down further versus liquid where you say, oh, I have to hold. Then we do the oral stage where we have to do something with that bolus. And this is where we begin mixing it with saliva and getting it ready to go back. Okay, so having our kids chew the food, isn't that whole thing your mom taught you, chew your food before you swallow? It's a very good rule because it begins to stick enzymes in there that begin to break down the food. So partially it's a digestion situation. Secondly, it is getting the bolus organized so that you can begin to transit it back and get it back there. The next issue then that we take a look at is the pharyngeal phase. This is the big play. That six things go on here at once. It's in the handout, I'm not gonna go over it. Other than to say, the larynx has to rise, the tongue has to come down, the soft palate has to go up as you trigger this. And somewhere between those little fascia or those pillars and the top of the epiglottis, you have to decide that this is going to happen. And the muscle called the inferior constrictor opens up. All of you have left late for work, you got the cup of coffee, you got the yogurt or something in the car, you're probably putting your makeup on at the same time. I always see you get behind that woman in St. Louis driving you nuts, okay? And you're in a hurry and you get to work and you think you're gonna belch and you go, there comes your breakfast and you catch it, don't you? All right, we have a muscle that decides the food either goes past it's a point of no return or if it comes up the wrong way, you catch it. I think our kids have got a problem with that muscle. How many of you have spewing issues? Okay. We talk about reflux. I'm not convinced that it's reflux, and I'm very happy. A lot of presenters out here talk about, have talked about for the first time is gastro reflux. We don't call it a disease, okay? It's not like polio. It deals with a closure issue of that muscle. So we're gonna talk about that. The pharyngeal stage goes, that muscle has to open up once the food goes through that muscle. We then go to the esophageal stage where it goes to the belly. All right, we're gonna take a look at a normal swallow here. Uh, technology, I can't do this. All right, what you're gonna see here now, this is an adult. One other thing you have to realize about normals versus our kids. 
normal, look at this guy, 90 degree swell. Here's the mouth. The food's going to literally come and straight down to 90 degree. This little girl sitting over here, at best, is 120 degrees. If you take a look at some of our older adult kids, they're bent over orthopedically. What's this doing to that degree? Okay, so they're changing the angle, and as they change the angle, one critical point is right here. This is the epiglottis, this is the little flap that sticks up. If that flap doesn't get bent over, you're gonna see stuff come right down here. I'm gonna show you the normal, I'm gonna show you some problems, then we're gonna look at my quick swallow. Am I darn out of time? Kind of, <laughs> not? All right, here we go. We're a little pressed, yeah. Okay, so this could be very quick. I'm gonna try and talk you through it. So this is a barium. There it goes. Now that's thin liquid. And as you can see, he's got a, a little. All right, when you see this, this is called a molecular. This is not to be confused, if you will, with the airway. So that's a normal pooling area. Some of our kids are catching food in there and it's spilling over afterwards. Let's see if we can do this again. Okay, so that's a normal swallow of liquid. And we're gonna go to a thicker consistency. All right, now this person happens to have a trachea, just ignore that, we'll talk about that later. Safe swallow, we're having them bend over a little bit for clearing. And we're gonna take and we're gonna do some thicker things here. This just gives you an idea, good normal swallow. Okay, I'm gonna make all of you diagnosticians here in a second. <coughs> rather large bolus. That muscle that we talked about is right down in this area that has to go down. Okay? So, now that you're all good normal swallowers here, good adults, and here's the one I want you to take a look at. This is a person who is not so efficient. And you're gonna see air, you're gonna see, first of all, a rotten head position. Head is totally up. I kind of shuddered when I heard somebody say, let's have them swallow this way. Okay, because that's a direct shot right into the lungs. If you're going to do that, if you need that position, then I would add to it the postural to lay it more back horizontally. I've got a couple of kids that we feed about 10 degrees so that the food, is if it, it drops and they can't get it, if they can't safely protect the airway, it falls back to the back wall, the pharynx, it goes down the back wall. Let's take a look at this guy. This is a real class act of aspiration. Aspirations are a fancy word for it goes into the lungs, it's very dangerous, and they will get pneumonia. Okay, so what I want you to watch for is this area right here. Here comes the bolus. Now, here's poor management. Notice how long it takes, and there's our bolus going into the airway. Here's the pit tube going into the airway. What's more concerning to me, besides the aspiration, is if you and I did this, we would cough our brains out. This guy is not coughing at all. It's just oh, right on down. Okay? So, what do we do about that? We'll talk about that in just a second. We're going to move on real quick. That's my biggest safety issue with some of these, uh, uh, our Costello kids. We're not going to do the flows. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Here's the questions I want you to ask. Why are we going to do swallow? And Dr. Uh, <coughs> Walter was very good about this. Most of these kids, it's two issues. A safety issue and a nutritional issue. Can they get enough nutrition in? Okay? So it's not just, are they safe with swallowing? Are they getting enough bolus in? Can they get it in fast enough? So, some of this food fighting business is, this is a major effort. You know, it's like asking your spouse to go out and mow the yard in a 95 degree heat. Don't want to do it. It's just a pain in the butt, okay? Okay, so these kids, this is a very difficult thing for them to do, okay? What information is this going to give you? Um, I was happy to hear that there's some disgruntlement about fees. The newest thing is called fiber endoscopic swallowing evaluation. A fees is going to tell you, is the kid 
aspirating yes or no. We put food and dye together, we have them swallow, we then take a look fiber optically into that port that contains the voice and the uh, epiglottis. And we can say, huh, we see blue dye on the vocal folds, he probably aspirated. The city graphic that we looked at tells us a lot more information, a lot more expensive. So if you're looking at issues of safely swallowing and can we modify the swallow so he's safe, and what food consistency is he or she going to take that's safe, then you want to do that cineforographic. What's a modification? A modification is anything that you're going to do that's going to help that child swallow better, i.e., head positioning. I do a lot of chin to chest. I do a lot of ear management. You take a breath of air, you put the food in the mouth, we then tuck the chin, swallow. And then if it goes down the wrong way, the kid doesn't go <gasps> to cough and pull it further down into the lungs. You already have air there. You have them cough afterwards. If he has a little aspiration, it pops up. I have colleagues. These are speech pathologists. When they see a little trace aspiration, they go, oh my god, you have to stop this. And they send you home and they say, you can't swallow. How helpful is that? Okay. Part of this is knowing how much risk we can take. This is, I don't gamble. We have gambling and St. Louis in the boats. I don't have to gamble because they do it at work every day, okay? So I'm taking a risk with a kid because some of us can aspirate a little bit and get by with it. So we're gonna do that. How do we know? I monitor my kids all the time. I monitor my adults. And here's the rule. If you're swallowing and you're not sure whether the kid's aspirating or not, I have them take a temperature. The kid pops a temperature of over 100 degrees, I have him stop swallowing, because he's probably aspirating, and pneumonia is the body's reaction to bad stuff in the lungs, so you produce all this phlegm and gamak, and you pop a temperature to get that back out. Okay, so I just say to my family, they pop a 100 degree temperature, call me. It's 101, stop feeding me. And then we're gonna come back in and take a look at this again because something's wrong. If I haven't modified them right, I need to change it, or if they may not be following the rules. We're blessed with a lot of engineers in St. Louis and Boeing. Those guys think they can do it better because they're engineers. So they don't follow the instructions, okay? So another thing, ask for the instructions to be written out for you. When you go in, you're getting all this information and they say, okay, we want you to turn your head, tuck your chin, take a breath, do this, do that, and then swallow and cough. You get home and you go, what in the world did they just say? So demand that they give you some instructions that are written out that aren't going to be there. All right. Now, if, this is kind of an interesting thing. Will the therapy to help voice all self help swallow? Yeah. Some of the things we're going to do to strengthen the oral cavity are also going to help swallowing. The tongue situation in Costello kids is such, large tongues don't swallow well. They don't mechanize well, you don't develop enough pressure. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to talk about tongue wedging in just a minute too. One of my favorite scary topics. All right. Out of your swallow, we want to know the following information. Are there staging problems? Pre, oral, pharyngeal, esophageal. Is there motor movement problems? Are we transiting? Are our kids biting their tongues a lot while they're chewing? Huh? It happens. Okay. Can't get that tongue to sweep in amongst the mandible in the mandible because it's too big. And the tongue is much bigger than, than the normal person's, and they get it in there and they have to sweep. You have to sweep. We all sweep in there. I, I love it. You know, you go kind of, truck stops from a favorite place, you know, they come out. What are they doing? They're digging all that stuff out between their dentures, right? All right. We all do that. And so we sweep the food, we re-roll the bolus in, you pop the cheek tension goes in here. What have we already said about the, who brought up the fat puffy cheeks thing the other day? Somebody did here. Cheek tension's a huge issue. Muscle tone is less in these kids, and so they're not pushing the bolus backward with the cheek tension, so they sweep it out. So they sometimes have to stick their tongue further in there, too. So that whole motility thing in the oral cavity, the valving difficulties is the soft palate going up, the tongue going down, epiglottis getting covered. 
are modifications going to help? And that's what you need to do. You need to try some modifications during that swallowing valve to see if they're going to help. All right, here we go. We're going to look at six things here on my little girl. I've taken a weird girl, right? She's my girl. I fed her at lunch today. It's good. Actually, she fed me. All right. First thing we're going to take a look at is no mandible grind. We're getting a girl here who's crunching, but you're not seeing any grind. I've seen about six or seven other kids doing the same thing. And along with that, they're really confused about how to do that, so their tongue is doing, we call it a tongue thrust, okay? We used to have that as part of our profession. It's great. And then the dentist figured out they could make a couple more bucks off it than we could, so they took it back, so, all right? <laughs> All right, if you've got that sort of a problem, we also have a glossal problem called organization. You've got to get that bolus rolled, you've got to get it around. You're going to see a struggle here with the bolus. Then we have transit. Once you get it organized, ready to swallow, how do you get it back? This happens to be one of the issues that we see. I saw three other kids doing this at lunch in the last two days. It's this. We call it the head toss. You can't get the tongue to rip back. You throw it back there with your, with your head. Or I saw another little guy doing this sort of number. He's kind of looks like uh, he's doing a side toss. He may have a more dominant side on the right. So he's whipping it over to the right. Okay, we've all seen that some kids? All right, last two issues here. The most dangerous thing I do in my life is give kids liquids. Liquids are going to go down. Their parents will say, well, they can't eat peanut butter, so let's give them milk. All right, liquid will go down. Chickens can drink milk, okay? It doesn't take talent to drink liquid. It takes talent to manage liquid, okay? So liquid is very, very difficult. There are some products out here that we use to thicken, and everyone's been on the market of a product called Thicken. It's like putting tapioca in water. It sucks, okay? <laughs> I'm not commercializing here, I'm sorry. We've, we've discovered a new product that we like a lot. It's called Simply Thick. Instead of it being a, um, a starch base, which uh, thick it is, this is an aspirin gum base. It's a clear gelatin sort of thing. Of course, it's made in St. Louis. Yeah. Happens to be two guys that started off as a business project. Uh, it's on the market, though. It's all over. Uh, it's called Simply Thick. Uh, I think they're, um, it's www dot simply thick dot com. Uh, if you have problems finding it, I'll give you my email address. It's out there and you shake this with liquid. I can make water look like pudding. Okay? So liquids are the most scary consistency folks, so just be aware of that. Alright, here we go. Let's take a look at these as we go through here. And I'm going to point out some, some issues. This is going to be very quick. All right, so here we go with no mandible grind. Just pay attention to this little girl's mandible. Look at, look at me, Dad. It's a leg. Look at okay, swallow it. Go ahead and chew it up and swallow. Chew it up and swallow. That's what you look. Watch me, watch me. Dad, watch me, watch me. It's hard okay. to see here, but look at the, yeah. we're seeing no grind. Yeah. The head's going up and down, and she's yeah. having problems oh. managing the bolus. Mm. Mm, look at me. I've got to get her to change that. Whenever you're ready. There we go. Oh, keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. That's the way. That's a good girl. That's good. That's good. Is that gone? Okay. That's real important information. Is it all gone? You would think it's a normal. You'd say, well, of course, dummy. We got some kids who don't have good oral sensation and they're going to reload, and they haven't cleaned out what's in the attic, okay? That's a real important question to ask. And it's also an important concept to know. Do they have enough oral sensation to know that they've got bolus left in there or not? As you start mixing new bolus with old bolus, and then you get confused about which is ready to go and which isn't. So that isn't a dumb question on the part of my clinician, okay? That's a real important question. All right. So that was no manual grind. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, now, instead of the grinding, pay attention to what she's doing with her tongue. Now what we're trying to do is get this bolus all kind of collected on both sides of the mouth, get it rolled into a ball, get it mixed, and then we say to ourselves, is it chewed up enough so that I can get it down safely? 
Okay, this little four-year-old making this decision, or five-year-old. Forget what age. Oh, um, wait a minute, I just, if I don't turn, I think we're all back. Mm, well, look at the tongue rippling, to back and back and back, and nothing's going down. That's right, go ahead and swallow it. There it goes. And, in addition, she pre-swallowed, and, th and this is something you'd have to watch this tape a few times, she actually pre-swallowed, and we, the, we have a thing called the swallow reflex, it's a combination of palate going up, epiglottis coming over, tongue going down. That bolus was down before three of the five things happened. Okay, so that's an organizational sort of thing. Now, what am I going to do about that? Well, some of our kids need not to have conversation when they're eating. Okay, and it sounds kind of funny. Oh, here's the microphone. It sounds kind of funny, but if you interrupt them, we have staging. What we just say about memory up here a moment ago. This is a multiple stage task that we do over and over and over and over again. I don't ask you to think about when you go from here to there walking, you don't think I have to put my right foot in front of my left. Oh, wait a minute. I left my left foot in front of my right. Okay? We don't talk about shifting weight. Same thing with swallow. This is an overlearned activity, but if they learned it wrong, then we've got to rechange the stage. And if you start throwing other stuff in here in the middle, like what'd you do at the zoo today? Well, in the middle of that, it doesn't work for some of these guys. So not only is it maybe a food issue, a swallow issue, it may be a strategy issue, okay? All right, next one. I'm just about done. Here's my fun one. This is the toss. So now she's got a bolus organizer ready to throw it back. Look what she does with the head. And the clinician at first didn't pick up on this, and then she does. This moves in that side to side, uh huh. But not real coordinated. We just kind of also do a little bit of throw a head back. Oh no! There it was. Okay. We're gonna see it again. There. One there more. There it is again. Mm. And again, look how far back. No, see it? There we go. A quick jerk. There we go. That's it. Look at me. Good. Good job. I did it. Okay, I'm gonna, I've covered this next one, so we're going to go ahead two more. We're going to look at just one swallow. This is swallow sucking. Swallow sucking, you would think sucking is a better issue than just drinking out of a glass. Some of our kids are going to benefit from a Tommy Tippy cup. You know what those are, and I'll be sort of thing, it's a hard cup of thing. <laughs> Take a look at what happens swallowing. Now she does this very well, but I, what I want you to pay attention to is the rapid motility that goes on here. And if you have a kid that's got a weak base down here and you start sucking, you're asking for some problems. So maybe sucking, boom, 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 is not as good as suck, suck, take the glass out of their hand. So you allow them to do two sucks rather than six in a row. Look how rapid this goes. Dennis, we have to watch the top. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> Can you keep it going? Yeah. 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 Um, um, That's a good girl. Okay. So, in your handout are modifications that will be asked. Head change, airway change, we may alter the food, we may modify consistency, or do combinations of above. Those sorts of things you need to have spelled out by your people, and you need to go over them multiple times so you understand them, and so you start setting a pattern of swallow. I'm there. You're awesome. Any questions?